for those of you who have attended our two previous webinars, this will be a little bit of a repetition uh, for a few minutes. Um, so please uh, uh, be uh, so sorry for that, but, but you will have to uh, bear with us. So our mission at Alvaco is that we want all world's meter and sensor data to be accessible and usable. Uh, and that usable part is, of course, very important. And why is this? Um, this is due to that a lot of the energy consumption in the world uh, takes place within buildings. Um, and so, so there is a lot of potential to actually save energy if you use the data that you collect from sensors uh, and meters in, in a good way. And we at Alvaco have been working with this for, for a very, very long time. And uh, um, I would say our first product within energy efficiency was around 1986. And since then we have been working more or less with this uh, only. Um, and this uh, also supports then a few of the UN global uh, goals for, for uh, a more sustainable future. Uh, number seven, affordable and clean energy. Uh, number nine, uh, industry innovation and infrastructure. And number 12, uh, responsible consumption and uh, production. Good. Um, there is a lot happening right now within smart cities, IoT, and we see a lot of actors that uh, take a quite broad approach to this. Uh, we believe that a vertical specialization is very important in order to build good products. Hence, we, we are focusing on, on a few uh, applications within the smart city, which is building and utilities and energy within buildings and, and uh, utilities, and of course. And this is where we build our services uh, and uh, products and, and um, all our product development is, is focused on, on uh, these two applications within the smart city segment, you could say. Our product portfolio consists of uh, sensors, both indoor and outdoor, uh, with wireless MBUS, MBUS, uh, LoRaWAN, um, both spanning from only temperature to humidity, um, and uh, also uh, we have CO2 and a lot of other applications within the portfolio. We have our meter connectivity modules, uh, which are modules that where we collaborate with the world leading uh, brands within heat metering. Uh, and, and makes communication modules for, for these heat meters uh, within uh, LoRaWAN, MBIoT, uh, LTE uh, and others. Um, we have our infrastructure portfolio, which consists of, of uh, gateways and um, other infrastructure to read and collect wireless and uh, wireless MBUS data as well as MBUS data. And then push that forward to, to a head-end system. And we have our cloud services, uh, Evo, which is um, our gathering name, you could say, for all our software and, and services for uh, supporting our products, uh, as well as our customers in, in deploying the products in the field and, and uh, make use of the data before they transport it to, to, um, to an application where, where they use it for, for instance, energy efficiency or, or billing or something like that. Elvaco, uh, as I mentioned uh, briefly before, has a long history within uh, metering. Uh, and wireless MBUS, which is what we're going to talk about today, has been very important for us uh, from almost from the beginning. It was founded in 1984 uh, in Kungsbacka as a family company. Uh, and then in 2014, it was acquired by a Swedish investment company, Investment AB Latour, which is a, a very long term. Uh, investor, you could say, which is, has um, created a lot of, of new opportunities for Vaco to, to uh, push our development efforts even further and invest more and more in, in new technologies, uh, which of course has been great uh, for us. Um, in 2020, we found that Vaco GmbH, a subsidiary in, in uh, Germany, and we also have local presence in UK and Spain. Uh, but our headquarters and all our development is still done in, in uh, Kungsbacka. 
where we are around, I would say, 55, 60 people currently, and, and uh, we are growing as well, which is uh, we are very happy about. Um, and if you know Elvaco a little bit, you know that we believe in open standards and open products, uh, and we are members of uh, both OMS Group and uh, Laura Alliance supporting this. And uh, we will, of course, continue to, to invest in, in uh, further product development and uh, uh, looking forward to uh, have uh, developed these and, and, and uh, see our customers use these products in the future. So thank you uh, very much for listening to me and I will hand over to uh, Christopher who will uh, talk to you about the wireless MBUS technology. Yes, uh, hello, my name is uh, Christopher Monasek. Uh, I am product manager for Meter Connectivity Modules and I have a history, uh, uh, soon 20 years here at Elvaco, running projects both with wireless ambas and other technologies. So hopefully I can give some input to uh, wireless ambas and how we actually benefit from it in our projects. If we talk generally about the MBUS as a technology, uh, it is uh, based on a standard called EM31757-4. The 1, 2 and 3 are actually a part of the wired MBUS standard and the uh, physical layer uh, for wireless MBUS is utilizing the already existing uh, standard of this EM3757. Uh, and what is uh, uh, also nice to know is that different other, let's say, standardization organizations are utilizing this application layer and narrowing it a little bit down and more, make it even more, uh, let's say, standardized. And this is the OMS group, DSMR in Holland, and also actually DLMS is utilizing it as well. Uh, a wireless MBUS is based on to use a free, uh, the free frequency spectrum uh, of ISM band, um, 868, 169, 434. Uh, and the benefit with this is that you can build your own network. You have a drawback that it actually the performance can change over time because of other networks and products available on this frequency. It is uh, normally it's very regulated, the ISM band about the occupancy time you can actually uh, utilize. Uh, and that is also a demand to have a unit working on that frequency. If we talk about where wireless embassy is stated when we talk about the data rate uh, com and range compared to other technologies, uh, on the two uh, former seminars, we have uh, talked about uh, NBIOT and LoRaWAN. And uh, wireless embassies on data rate is a little bit faster than LoRaWAN, but uh, less uh, quick than NBIT. But the range is less uh, is not as long as on the both other technologies. Uh, uh, on wireless embassies, there are some different uh, modes available. We started with the T1 and T2 mode, and then it developed to S and C mode. And the less, uh, let's say, frequently used mode are the R mode and F mode. And N mode is on 169 and it has longer penetration. And it's, I think, more used in, in uh, mainly used in France, actually. Uh, what is really good is that C mode uh, is a more compact mode. It requires less energy and has a, let's say, it can have a higher data throughput over with less energy. So it will actually have a better battery lifetime than other modes, actually. Uh, the number two stands for bidirectional communication, and I will talk a little bit about that later on. When we talk about wireless embassy security, uh, they, they have uh, three modes, mode uh, usually used. It's mode seven, uh, zero, five, and seven. And mode uh, zero from the beginning was that no key whatsoever. That meant that the, the payload in there was not encrypted by any means at all. Then uh, mode seven come, and then they added a 128-bit free shared key encryption. And later on, they added the mode seven for a dynamic key, also 128. This has been utilized for OMS security profile, and OMS is built uh, using the wireless embassy as a standard and applying those security as security profiles. And the security profile C on OMS security platform is a, a very special security profile, not very commonly used. If we talk about the wireless embassy architecture, 
it's built up or very similar to other technologies like LoRaWAN, but with a little bit of a difference. You have the end nodes, uh, which is the wireless MBUS slaves. You have the concentrated gateway, which will receive the telegram in the air. And then you have something that actually will be able to read these uh, raw MBUS data and do something with it. Here, actually the whole system ends from a standardization point of view, and then uh, the technology from concentrated gateway or receiver to the meter data management server or local connectivity is totally defined by the supplier of that product. So this is a huge difference compared to LoRaWAN uh, when we talk of total standardized way of communicate all down to the application server. And also the security suite for uh, wireless MBUS ends with the payload over the air from the from the wireless MBUS device to the receiver or concentrated gateway. So this is a big difference. If we talk about some other features available in the wireless MBUS, it's that where there is a repeater function uh, defined in the standard uh, one hop, and that can actually be very effective used where you don't have the reception range needed uh, because as uh, compared to LoRaWAN or uh, like NBIT, you do not actually, the wireless ambas do not adapt or have any, let's say, unique way to adapt to the radio uh, quality in the air. So uh, if you don't have the reception, you either need to move the device closer to the base station, which is normally not possible, add base stations or add a repeater in between. Uh, download is possible over wireless ambas, but very unusual. I would say, I have not encountered any project during the last 10 years with a bi-directional communication over MBUS that is practically used. Uh, and we're using the standard application layer uh, for 13757 for payload. That means that the information in the telegram is encoded in the way as for wired MBUS. That means that you can utilize any uh, uh, system or device encoding wired MBUS uh, decoding wired MBUS to actually decode the wireless uh, telegram, as long as you have decrypted it with the proper key. What is also different compared to wired MBUS is that no primary address is used when you are communicating with a wireless, uh, when a wireless MBUS meter is communicating, only the secondary address. Uh, what kind of limitations do we see on wireless MBUS? First of all, as I said, you have no adaptation to poor radio environment. Uh, the radio sense on a, on a specific bit rate will not change. It will have the sending interval. You have no, ac let's say you, can, you do not actually confirm that from, from the gateway or receiver side that the message is received. Uh, it's also a, a complex environment to enable very high end-to-end -end security because normally it's pre-shared key and actually there are no standard for say security of the reception to the receiver. Also, you have a limited amount of data in the payload, around 255 bytes maximum, but normally the, the supplier of wireless MBUS uh, devices try to limit the amount of data sent because the more data you actually have in the package, the more likely is it that you will have some issues uh, during the transportation in the air. Uh, also, the downlink, which I talked about earlier, requires a very complex system setup. It, it actually uh, is not, as on LoRaWAN, a defined standard from uh, how to handle the downlink commands. Uh, this is a requirement from the system utilizing it. And fire forget. And of course, when you have limited amount of uh, payload, you have also limited support for profiles, power profiles and energy profiles, which can be a requirement in some installation and projects. And here comes to let's, the holy grail when I'm having discussions with my uh, customers and projects around the world is when you want to have time stamped values uh, on wireless MBUS, this is something that is very tricky to achieve actually. Uh, the main reason for that is that the clock that you need to time stamp a value uh, must be where the origin of the meter data if you want to see when the actual uh, meter data is produced. And as the downlink functionality of wireless MBUS is limited, and a downlink for setting the meter clock is necessary to have a timestamp value, that's where the limit comes from. And this table here, I will explain it because I will stay a little bit around it. This is 
at a time where the actual, when you wanted to have a time, let's say 12 o'clock in the night, that actually uh, you don't control when a message is sent over the air with wireless MBUS. And, you know, and the clock that can, for some meters, be in the protocol or in the payload might, is normally not set or you cannot actually quality assure that one. So this value that you receive, this volume, was actually read 22 minutes after this clock. And this is how, let's say, a meter which communicates C mode and sends a terium every 15 minutes in the air actually transports. So uh, what you actually see when you see 32 minutes here is when the message did not actually go through. It was missed by the receiver because maybe collision in the air or other circumstances. And I have a couple of examples more uh, to show this. This is a six minute T mode meter, which sends rather quickly. So you can see that the message was arriving uh, from zero to six minutes, uh, and sometimes it misses a telegram. And the more dense the population of meter is, the more frequent these collisions occur, actually. And of course, if you have other meters, some meter sends every 18 seconds. And then, of course, you can have more, let's say, accurate time to the minute. But sometimes you can see that it can collide and you miss six or seven or even 20 telegrams for some reasons. This is the main reason why wireless MBUS is not suitable for time stamp values. Uh, so. And I will uh, hopefully now it will uh, uh, function here. I will show you an example of this actually. If you just give me a second. Uh, here I have a customer who wanted to. I can show this is a place in Sweden actually. They had heat meters and water meters situated in 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 the, in their let's say. Uh, they run that as a utility and they wanted, OK, we want to have measurement over wireless MBUS, but we want to have no later latency than 15 minutes. And OK, and they asked and also they presented to us, OK, where are you allowed to put base stations in this area? So this was the, let's say, the, the prerequisites we had to work with to achieve this. So what we actually did to see if it was possible, we placed a base station at each of these places and listened for 15 minutes. Because if I would listen for one day or two days, probably the reception or let's say the more meters would have come in. But that was, let's say, the requirements. Then I looked at some results uh, in this area and I saw what was what kind of meters did I get? So from the center point, you can see that I got, let's say, pretty large area, but I also missed. So if I add the, the water meters, you can see there were a lot of them that I didn't receive, but these were within 15 minutes. So this is how we actually showed to the customer that you needed more base stations, the more the higher granularity of value you actually needed for your operations. So in the end, of course, we covered with all these spots, all his meters, but he needed actually to place a base station on each site to achieve 15 minutes granularity of values. And let's say if he wanted, let's say one day granularity, probably I could re reduce the number of base stations by half. So this is just a, a, a real example of uh, uh, life when you actually need to take into consideration that uh, you have a lot of collisions in the air and depending on the granularity, you need to put more dense populated base stations or receiver of wireless MBUS. Okay, so when should you use wireless MBUS and why? First of all, it's very suitable for battery operated devices. The main reason for this is that you can actually, as a developer of an MBUS, wireless MBUS device, know exactly the behavior and power consumption of the device you know exactly how often it sends, you know exactly the payload, and you know exactly uh, 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 the power consumption when it sends. So there is, there is no unknown when calculating the battery lifetime of an, uh, a wireless MBUS device. 
Uh, of course, you cannot, uh, in an installation, you should not count on timestamp values, as I described before. And also, when high granularity is not a must, I would say when you want to have high granularity, you need to put base stations more, more dense, actually. What is also so it's very easily scalable. You can add a base station or receiver whenever you like. It uses a very standardized way of communication on the EM standard. And I think the, the highest benefit is when the payload is standardized uh, and the, uh, you can mix manufacturer and different kind of measuring devices in a very, very easy way. And uh, you can actually, that is, in my opinion, the, the, the best benefit. And uh, the standardization of payload. Uh, a lot of people says that there are like uh, dialects and so on, on on the EMBA standard. I would say no, it's just uh, the amount of time you spend on implementing the EMBA standard, actually. And now when we have a group like OMS, it will actually help even more not to, let's say, have that as a, as a excuse of not bringing in EMBAs. It's very standardized, the payload. Okay. What have Elvaco brought into the market when we talk about wireless MBUS solutions? Uh, first of all, uh, as in my previous presentations, the MBUS product of Elvaco also is a part of the whole chain from production to data management. Uh, here uh, we are a little bit uh, uh, in the mid uh, between very standardized to early uh, technology compared to NBIoT and Laura Vaughan. Uh, there are uh, less standardization when we talk about uh, back end to uh, gateway communication. Uh, all our products are, of course, fully product tested. Uh, also, the security keys that are the pre-shared key are created in production and also communicated to our secure KMS, which are based in the cloud. So no security related information is, is situated at our EMS, actually. And of course, they are ISO certified, certified, and we do a yearly audit at our EMS. When we talk about our wireless receiver, we have two variants. One is a DIN rate variant, the above, it's called the CMEX50, and the below, it's the CMI box, we call it. Uh, they have identical radio characteristics. The only thing that differs them is the uh, physical interfaces and how you actually can interact with the product. The, the CMX50, the Dean Rail variant, it has a display, it has an inbuilt-in MBUS wired master, it, it can, you can display, do display operation, uh, so you can actually see uh, and add keys into the device via the push button, which is maybe unpractical, but possible. Uh, you can also communicate over RS-232 or USB to other, uh, other devices directly. If we talk about the CMI box, the only, uh, let's say, communication interface is a two-wired MBUS slave output. Uh, that is, of course, also available on the Dean rate variant. So both can be utilized with any existing MBUS network. Just connect them and you have a wireless connectivity. Uh, what is also important to understand, uh, they both support local key handling. That means that over standard MBUS communication, you can actually upload security keys so the encrypted MBUS telegram can be decoded on board the device. So an existing maybe older system that do not support on the fly decryption of, uh, of uh, the MBUS uh, can be used by uploading keys to the device. Also, they support upload meter list because what is an issue with the wireless MBUS is that there can be many meters around which are not uh, let's say related to the project that you would like to see and we have a limitation in these devices when running normal mode that they can maximum maximum hold 800 meters in the meter list so you might want to define what kind of meters they should listen to and register uh, information from and that is possible of uh, uploading meter list to the device and with the combination which i will show later on with our gateways you have a complete amr system actually what is also a nice feature of these devices that they actually add a primary address to the wireless telegram if wanted to. So you older systems that can only handle uh, primary addresses can actually use wireless devices with these products because it adds the primary address to the slave. And 
just this these are not uh, wireless uh, devices but i just want to mention them a little bit because in the next step i will show different solutions and they are a part of that solution when we talk about uh, uh, communication back to head and system and so on uh, elvaco has two devices they are either ethernet or uh, cellular connected they're called cme 3100 or 2100 they are pretty similar in functionality but cme 3100 has more uh, function like web interface rest communication it can also convert any information to modbus tcb for integration with bms system and it's only the only dlms certified mbus gateway in the world and that is we are really really proud of that actually so this product can actually convert any MBUS meter into DLMS, and it can be read by any DLMS uh, 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 readout software and meter data management system. And of course, they support uploading keys to the device, so you can locally handle the, the measurement value in the device as well. And they have historical data storage for, I think, minimum 25,000 uh, readouts. Uh, in the small one and one million readouts in the ethernet based variant and this and how it actually used in practical manner is that we in many projects used what we call elvaco wired backend wireless mbus solution and this means that you actually utilize a wired mbus to connect the wireless receiver and terminate it in one of the gateways uh, this is uh, a, a very uh, i would say a uh, secure way of enabling local communication with with a CME 3100 so you can connect any meters uh, wireless and you actually use them locally via the CME 3100 into the BMS system but at the same time push values to the meter data management system or billing system uh, another setup is where we're using a large area wide area and bus solution is when you're utilizing the CMEX50 together with maybe with the CME3100 and you actually put a large antenna on the house and try to cover as large area as possible. And I will, I have a later in the presentation, I will show you a project in Kuwait where this is actually utilized. But also uh, the last four or five years, Elvoco has been involved in larger wireless MBUS projects. That means that you have a high density of meters. And actually, uh, you cannot perform uh, local commissioning or local uh, configuration of the receivers because the amount of meters. Uh, and what we actually have done that is with the same hardware as I have presented, we have a functionality that we call stream mode. This means that the wireless receiver is listening to everything and actually streams this into the CME3100 and there it can push the data with the any granularity you want. This means that you have no meter list, no commissioning in field whatsoever. So everything you hear is actually transported up to the head and system. In the receiver and the CME3100, we have some filter on manufacturer or medium, which means that you can actually reduce data. And then you can push this information over FTP, HTTP or REST. And um, this was actually, this is um, one of the main products sold in the Middle East region, mainly because of the high density of meters and also the high standardization of utilizing uh, the REST and FTP and HTTP protocol in the systems available. And then we, if we talk about our uh, end devices, our wireless uh, solution we have sensors they are called cmi 10 w it's a wireless temperature and humidity sensor with a display uh, we also have it uh, without the display and humidity and we also have it with only temperature so this is our range of indoor temperature and humidity and in uh, most installations they are used not only for measuring the indoor temperature but also in combination with the CME 3100 to communicate information about how, where is it hot or cold in the house to the BMS system so the BMS system utilizes this information to control the house in a very efficient way. This is uh, in comparison when you actually use an outdoor temperature, temperature and control the heat. You're actually now using the indoor temperature in a very easy way uh, together with the 3100 and the BMS system. And of course, we have the same product for outdoor temperature and humidity. 
And on the meter side, uh, we have developed a communication module that you can utilize to put to any ABB electricity meter and make them wireless. And also we have the same functionality for Landers and E350 meter to make them wireless as well. So this is our meter connectivity modules for electricity and temperature. Uh, our gateways or receivers can handle any wireless MBUS meter, uh, which is uh, using the standard EN35757. Uh, what we also had at, from Elvoco side is that we can utilize all our products actually to uh, collect the data uh, with our gateways in our services. So they can all be combined uh, and also be utilized in our services. And we do device management. We actually control the data quality. We make the collection and visualization. And of course, all these data are available over standard API. So uh, in our projects, what have we, what have we learned? Uh, first of all, uh, when doing large MBUS projects, you should have no commissioning or no configuration in field whatsoever. That's why stream of functionality is a must. Uh, also, try to do a combination of billing metering and indoor temperature control, which will result in a, short, a shorter return of investment. And uh, this is proven and done uh, in large scale in the Nordic countries with Elvaco and our partners. And also, I haven't seen any downlinked communication over wireless MBUS for the last seven years, uh, actually practically utilized. Uh, and very important that a meter list functionality for fixed project is a must if you would have liked to have a really nice and easy administrated project. And what I've also seen that wireless MBUS in comparison to LoRaWAN and NBIT, they are more sensitive for external conditions like building material, uh, if it's concrete, like high, high insulated houses and so on. So that is something that one need to take into consideration and need to adapt to in the different projects. So Niklas, I hand over to you and uh, the Q&A session. Great, thank you very much, Eric and, and Christopher. Uh, so we're now entering the, the last session of this uh, webinar uh, Q&A, and we have three questions in the chat. So I will start with the first question and uh, ask that to Christopher. Uh, hello, are Mood 7, Profile 7 gateways available? Uh, any update on the semi box? Uh, yes, we support Mode 7. In our in wireless MBUS receivers, yes. Yeah, I'm really not sure what he means there with updates in my box. So, so please elaborate a bit on that in the chat if it wasn't a good answer uh, enough. Yeah, for you. I maybe can elaborate that. It's uh, uh, all the software in our wireless receivers is remotely updatable. Both actually can do it locally with the USB master, and it can be done remotely utilizing. Uh, any remotely connected MBUS uh, gateway, as long as it supports transparent MBUS communication. Yeah, good, thanks. Uh, the second question, where can I find documentation of, a, of how a MBUS payload is constructed? Uh, every, every manufacturer and uh, designer of an MBUS slave must and should have in their ma user manual of the device, have a clear MBUS telegram specification. And, and, and uh, I can show it later on as well. Uh, so if you Google or send a manual for like say CMA 10 W, you will see a, a very clear definition about how this telegram is, is, is done. Yeah, so you will basically be able to see it in our uh, manuals for the products. Yeah, definitely. I, I can meanwhile open one and I can show you. Uh, please continue and I will. Yeah, sure. Uh, the third question. Are you considering data reporting over MQTT? Yes. Quick. It's a, it's a part of of uh, of let's say the the roadmap of our devices to support that, uh, as uh, in the in the very identical way as our other uh, NBRT products. Uh, uh, another question here. I thought you said the MBUS payload was the same for all devices due to the standardization. Ah, okay, let, let, let's, uh, okay, in the MBUS standard, uh, you have a lot of, uh, there are definitions about how to present the payload. 
and these are standardized, but uh, one meter can contain different information compared to another meter. Mm -hmm. And that is what I meant, actually. That is what is read in the each, let's say, description of the MBUS uh, uh, user manual of the device. So uh, it is all MBUS is according to the standard, wireless MBUS standard and wired standard, uh, but you can choose what to define for your meter. Uh, um, hopefully that was a good answer. Yes. Um, there might be more questions, but um, if not, um, please follow us on LinkedIn and uh, or sub subscribe to our newsletter. Just log in to elvaco.se and you will find it in the bottom of the page. Uh, to get the latest updates on our partners, uh, products, and other information about the, the company, Elvaco. So with that said, we thank you so much for attending those uh, three webinars, and um, we look forward to see you in upcoming webinars during the year. Have a good day, everyone, and thank you very much.